Well, Tony, as you mentioned, of course, when Moxley headed to the showers. Seven days, John Moxley. Seven long days. I haven't slept a wink since me and you came toe to toe last week. And do you know why? It's because shut your damn mouth! It's because I saw the look in your eyes, man. You had the look of a man who had no fear, and you have no idea how much that pisses me off. See, you must have me confused with somebody else. You see a podium in this ring? Huh? You see an MJF 2020 sign? Nah, you don't. Because I'm not the same kid I was the first time you and I crossed paths, John. Not by a long shot. No, no, no. Because I ain't playing a character, John. You are. Walking around all tough. Big, bad John Moxley. You're a joke. You're about as much of a joke as these schmucks. But I read your book, John. It was a real good read. I especially love the part where you talked about your childhood. Because it turns out you were raised much the same as all these people here in Albany, New York. Uneducated, poor, white trash scumbag from the sticks. And you got bullied, didn't you, John? Cameraman, get in the corner. And you got bullied, didn't you, John? You got, you got beat down, you got your bicycle stolen, didn't you? And when stuff like that happens, it forces men to put on a front. And it works, John, you built a great character. That's why these morons chant your name every week. And they can chant your name all they want. They might buy it, John, but I don't. Because I know you, man. Deep down, you're still that same scared, poor little boy from the slums of Cincinnati. Except the only difference is now, you're old enough to drown all your childhood trauma in alcohol like a worthless drunk. But I'll give you credit, man. You beat the habit. And it takes... You shut your mouth, fat boy! I'll give you credit, man. You kick the habit. You got sober. And that takes a lot of intestinal fortitude. Guts! Bravery. You slayed your demons, you defeated your disease. But here's the problem, John. My brain is far more dangerous than your disease. And this is not just a message for you, it's a message for Jericho and Danielson. Bad things happen when people get in MJF's way. So, Mox, how about you take that vacation you were planning on, bud? How about you skip our thrash? Because if I were you, I wouldn't want to be winning my AEW world title. Make no mistake about it, Albany. It's my title. You know what, John? When you came back from your little stint at rehab, you told a story about a demon. And that demon, it hanged over your head like a black cloud and it was in your ear. And the demon told you that everything you've earned since you left those slums of Cincinnati, you don't deserve it. That demon told you he was going to take everything away from you. Your family, your fame, your success, your fortune. Know this, John Moxley. If you do not tread lightly, you will find out that I demon you can't slay. Now, Albany, let's get down to business. Not that that's something you can understand since you're all poor. A young group of gentlemen helped me procure my chip in the casino ladder match. All these men all come from different walks of life, and yet they all share the same goals. Allow me to introduce to you the first ever stable on retainer, led by a man who is my best friend. A man who I have known since I was 19 years old, and a man who's got more talent in his little pinky than any of you worthless pieces of shit have in your entire
we prayed and we prayed and we prayed and we came up with a logical solution. Everyone in this ring on retainer. We are in JF's support system while we gain more opportunities for ourselves. And, and tonight is one of the rare times you will see us all together because when MJF doesn't need us, we will go our separate ways. So I'm going to admit something for the first time on national television. I'm not a publicist. I'm not a manager. And I damn sure ain't no assistant. Who am I? I'm a friend. Just a friend. A friend who has a network and connections to make any and everything happen. And some of you all wish you had a friend just like me. Everything I've done since Double or Nothing has been a lie. It's been a hustle, a con, all to infiltrate the system. And how did I do it? You know, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. From kicking it with Britt Baker and Jamie Hayter to watching reruns of Living Single with the House of Black. There's not one rock that I haven't on tour. And where I'm from, there's a phrase, the black of the berry, the sweet of the juice. And on one hand, that means love and admiration for our beautiful black queens. And on the other hand, that means that the juicier the gossip, the more power you have. And there's nothing like good old fashioned blackmail. That's what makes me wake up in the morning. That is what turns me on. So let's talk about what everyone here wants and what they're here for. Morrissey, big meal. I know what you want. You want to do whatever you want. And since no one here is going to say it, we appreciate you and I love you. I love you, man. I don't know if you heard me. I said, I love you, man. Lee Moriarty, my brother, all praise is due to our lie. I told you if you trust in him, he will provide, right? I told you that. I think it's time for this young man to become a star. And also bring some honor back to the Ring of Honor Pure Championship. And the guns, I think,
unique matchup coming up next. Jungle Boy became Jay Lethal, and earlier today, we found out how this came about.